In this video, we will discuss the adjusted present value, our APV model, as opposed to the net present value, our NPV model. When we calculated the value of a series of cash flows or a company using the NPV model, we discounted the cash flows at the equity cost of capital associated with the capital asset pricing model. With the APV model, we instead split up the cash flows into those cash flows associated with equity financing and those cash flows associated with debt financing. The debt financing cash flows create what is called a tax shield, since interest payments on the debt can be written off on a company's taxes. And then we discount these cash flows not by the equity cost of the company, but a so-called unleveraged cost to the company. So the cost of the company's equity if it had no debt. The reason that we would do this is if one company is purchasing another, during the purchase process, both the cash flows can change pretty quickly due to synergies in the company, and also the cost of capital can change rather quickly as the company is purchased. So when valuing the company, the APV model can be more advantageous or at least easier to use than the NPV model. In our example, we will consider a target company with a debt of $35 million, a debt to assets fraction of 35%, a cost of debt of 9%, and we will consider this in a market with a risk-free rate of 5% and an average rate of return of the market of 12. The beta of the target company being purchased is 1.3. We will then need to calculate both the leveraged and then from that the unleveraged cost of capital for the target company to figure out the value of the target company during the purchase. The equity cost of capital leveraged comes from the standard old capital asset pricing model, risk-free rate, plus the market risk premium or the rate of return of the market minus the risk-free rate times beta. The unleveraged cost of capital comes from the equation of the fraction of the company financed with debt times the cost of debt plus the fraction of the company financed with equity times the cost of equity. So in our example, we have 5% plus the market risk premium of 12 minus 5 or 7% times the beta of 1.3 gives us a leveraged cost of capital of 14.1 using the fraction of the company financed with debt of 0.35 times the cost of that debt of 9 plus the fraction financed with equity of 0.65 times the cost of that equity of 14.1, we get an unleveraged cost of equity of 12.3. When we calculate the APV value of the company, we will use that as the discount rate. The cash flows we will use here are the sum of the cash flows associated with just equity financing and the cash flows associated with debt financing. The assumption is our target company has free cash flows in year one, two, three, and four of two, 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 and five, and an unleveraged horizon value of $80 million associated with all cash flows after year four. The tax shield is one, 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 and four, and then horizon value of the tax shield is $40 million. We sum all of these cash flows to get the total cash flows for the target company of 333 and 129, and we use the NPV equation to discount those at the unleveraged cost of capital of 12.3%. So we get this, which is the value of the target company's operations. That is not the value that a company purchasing would be willing to pay because the target company has quite a bit of debt. To get the equity value of the target company, we would take the value of the operations minus the value of debt, or 88 minus 35, which gives us $53.23 million. This means for this particular company, different companies have different synergies, they would be willing to pay up to $53.23 million. Of course, they would like to pay less than that, and therefore the purchase of the company would increase the value of the combined operation. I thank you.
for watching this video.